viewers and listeners, welcome to this week's episode of the Carbone Lawyers podcast series. As you can see, we're, we're practicing social distancing. Lawyers, COVID, Tony. By the way, I better introduce myself. Tony Carbone, I'm the managing partner of Carbone Lawyers. I've got John Carances, accredited specialist and very senior and head of personal injuries at Carbone Lawyers. Good day, John. Hi, Tony. Hi, viewers. Hi, Olivia. And first time on the show, Olivia Liberata. She's a lawyer doing a lot of family law and litigation. Good day, Olivia. How are you? Good, Tony John. Thank you for having me. John, soon we've raised this issue about COVID-19. Oh, yes. Um, look, one of the things positive, I guess, mm-hmm. if I can use that yeah, word. I'm not sure about that, but go on. To come out of the whole thing is that there's obviously a lot less cars on the road, yes. correct? Exactly. Oh, yes. And Olivia, because of the numbers of cars that aren't on the road, fortunately, the number of accidents are down. Car accidents are down. Right. Great. And as, as part of the TAC policy committee meeting with the board every three yes. months, we normally have up to nearly 20,000 accidents a year with a number of serious injuries. But in the last meeting we went to, John, mm-hmm. fortunately they said the numbers were down. Well, Tony, the roads are quiet. The roads are empty. Well, that's a good thing for it's, once. Uh, it's getting a bit busier now, and I don't think the state government likes that uh, because in the end – the directive from Daniel Andrews is stay at home, don't go out unless you have to. Yes. Don't stay at home and work from home unless you have to. Yes. Olivia, the whole thing around car accidents, the fact that the numbers are down, that's the only positive to come out of this it's COVID-19, positive. isn't it? Only positive. You know, um, only at positive. the same time, have you seen the new um, adver- advertisements made by the TAC regarding seatbelts, Tony? requiring people to wear seatbelts because that, the fatalities regarding people not wearing seatbelts has increased. Jeez, I thought people had learnt their lesson when it came to seatbelts because, I mean, they've been at us for years over seatbelts, haven't they? And they've brought back those old advertisements from 10, 20 years ago. Oh, I didn't think that was an issue. I mean, I've just put the belt on, you know, automatically once I get in the car. I I think, Tony, it's the the young, new generation, um, people that are just getting their licence now, they haven't been exposed to that type of confrontational uh, TV advertisement, which is, as we know, it's yep. a pretty uh, horrific scene. Of course. Horrific. It's doing its rounds again on social media. Oh, is it? The full clip. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyway, they're doing a good job down at TAC. Um, Always. You know, trying to pre- prevent accidents and serious injuries. Oh, yes. And talking Look, about injuries, yeah, this, Tony. This, this is... Uh, it's a death. I'll tell you what. If it was in a month's time, with the new work cover manslaughter legislation oh, being passed by the state government, be, there'll be trouble. I reckon there'd be issues here. Yes. This worker was crushed. Yes. Transport worker died after he was crushed while unloading a still light tower. Segments from a semi trailer. Fifty six. Yeah, Tony, fifty six year old uh, in Altona. Uh, the load literally moved and crushed him. Now you've got issues about. Well, wait a minute. Who was um, who had examined? the logistics of the operation in question. Why did this happen? Hopefully, and there will be a WorkSafe investigation, oh, Tony. And hey. police investigation. We, we yeah. just feel so sorry for the family involved. Uh, their loved one has gone to work and won't come back. And sadly, you know, they're grief-stricken at the moment, but fortunately for the um, family, they've got, you know, a lot of rights under the workers' compensation legislation. The dependency benefit and no-fault benefit – Plus, he's also got the rights to sue because no yeah. doubt someone's done something wrong. Yeah. But always the case. Yeah. Failing yeah. to follow OHS rules and regulations, John. Exactly. And more often than not, these cases here, there hasn't been a risk assessment. More often than not, you'll find that the employers or whoever's put the uh, items on the truck haven't risk assessed it. There's a deficiency, yeah. Tony. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, you're right. The compensation is very large uh, for the family. Or dependent children. Yes. Uh, and they should, I hope, seek legal advice. And sadly, it doesn't substitute for the loss of a loved one. No, it never does. never does. Olivia, tell us what this episode's about. We're talking about family law. What in particular? Our family law episode today will discuss property and financial settlement. So when we first meet with a client, what do we discuss? Mm. All the nitty gritty and the intricate details. Okay. okay. Now, John, just on that, yeah. the beauty of the family law system in Australia is you don't need to be divorced 
to get a property settlement. Not at all. But if you are divorced, you've only got a – there's time limits. So if a divorce order has been granted, you've only got within 12 months to lodge essentially a, an application. In Otherwise, you've got to get Otherwise, an extension. Otherwise, you've got to get an extension. Yes. And as we know, once you're out of time, it's bringing those – you know, type of matters before the court, it's quite complicated. You yes. have to establish some sort of hardship. You need, you, need to, you need to show cause why you've taken so long. Exactly. And, yeah. John, exactly. the Family Law Act also picks up people that are living in the so-called, as we knew it, de facto relationships. De facto relationships, yes. Picks up boyfriend and girlfriend if they've been living together a couple of years. Cohabitation. Cohabitation, two years. Um, picks up partners living gay together. Gay couples. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It really picks up just about everyone. Every man is dog. Exactly. Yes, so that's in a relationship. And yes, tell us the definition of a relationship. De facto, under the legislation, is persons not legally married or not related by family, mm. having regard to certain circumstances, so the duration of the relationship, the yes. nature, are there any children, are you living together, sexual relationship, financial dependence, ability to earn income, and there are a couple living together on a genuine domestic Basis. Could I yes. just ask, do they have to be living together? Living together, yes. 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 That's a prerequisite, John. Mm. Now, John, one of the key components, and I guess when there's a breakdown of a relationship, marriage or whatever, one of the key components, and there's a lot of suspicion, is what are the assets? Oh, yes. What are the assets, John? You oh, know yes. what I mean? In, in and this is where uh, the lawyer has to do an exercise in literally um, – going through the history of the economic assets of the couple in yes. question, Tony. Who put in what? Who contributed what? I'll get to that. The but gifts. What I'm saying is mm. what is the definition of assets? It's what does it pick up? Something of value. Okay. Olivia, we had a case of uh, model cars. Yep. You um, have to include everything. Swarovski sets. A stamp, a stamp collection. Stamp my, collection. My stamp collection. And you know what? We're seeing a, often – a trend, animals, dogs, cats, birds, whatever. So is, is a let's dog make, an asset? Let's oh, make yeah, provision yeah. for it. Are really? You People will fight over oh. the dog. There was a couple oh. recently that spent $100,000 fighting over their dog. Yeah. They could have it's, bought the whole. I've had inquiries. What about <laughs> the dog? Uh, yeah. Model cars, um, paintings. So anything of value, anything of significance is could be a term. And superannuation's big, John. Of course. Some people, yes. especially if they've been together for over 20 years, they might have a policy worth over a million dollars. Mm. And what's the rules around that, um, Olivia? How do you assess someone's superannuation so if they haven't retired yet? With the superannuation, we would always ask for the most recent statement. Yes. And it's imperative that we get that recent statement. So super will essentially go from fund to fund. Mm. Yes. It's not withdrawn. You don't get it cash up front. It's treated the exact same way it so generally would be. So how do you – let's say it's worth a million bucks. What does the so other party get? Say we've got a million bucks yep. and the parties have agreed that – 50-50. 50-50. So 500000 yes. is going to come from fund A over to fund B. We need to seek procedural fairness from the fund that it's going from to. Oh, so you can transfer a, it across? You can transfer it across. Okay. Yeah. That's, and usually that's interesting. Via, usually via a court order – which is by agreement, but yes. yeah, transfer we can know. occur, Tony. One of the most important considerations, and this is something that caused a lot of problems when there's breakups, what do you do and how do you treat, John, um, assets that someone's brought into a relationship? Let's say... A million-dollar property. Yes, mm. yes. How do you treat that, Olivia? What happens there? So what will happen is, is with all the assets, we want to know from pre the relationship, during... Post yes. at cohabitation, so when you're actually living together. So if this property has been disposed of, we need to know that if it's been disposed of. And where are the proceeds? Have the proceeds gone into another property? Are they sitting in a bank account? Are they in any type of investment? We need to know. Well, that. does let's say someone's brought in a million dollars into the relationship. That's does that million dollars get deducted before you distribute? Break not, it up? Not necessarily, Tony. Okay. What are the factors of the court? Awaiting occurs. Okay. Now, it gets taken into account yep. and uh, in favour of that person that put the million dollars in, yes. uh, but it's not necessarily a bla black fixed sum, isn't it? Is it? So how do they do it, Olivia? Is there a formula? What do they do? Well, say, for instance, that $1 million that's sitting in that account, it's gone to another property. Mm. Yep. We will then look at getting, say, a retrospective value on that property for mm. the initial contribution as yes. to what went towards it. Yeah, but that money's t 
turned into $2 million. So if parties can't agree generally to values, we have to go out and get a valuer. Do you get your million dollars back or do you get less? Not necessarily. Not necessarily you get your million dollars yeah. back. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It depends on a lot of other factors in respect of the weighting of all the uh, finances in play. So, And then what the current situation of the individuals are, as in one person is working, the other person's not working. Yes. And therefore, wait a minute, you have to take into account that the other person's not working and won't be working for the foreseeable future. Okay. That gets taken into account. So some of the key factors I'd imagine is the length of the relationship, correct? Totally. Of course. Yes. How many children? Yes. Of course. And the court needs to be satisfied that the kids are properly looked after. Exactly. Yes. Assuming you're the spouse, and I'm going to twist the roles now, mm. the husband's staying home looking after the kids, the wife's in a high-powered earning job. Mm. They break up. Yes. Is he entitled to maintenance, John? Yes, he is. And why is that, Olivia? He's in the homemaker capacity. As we see, this homemaker role gets given a real weight, not a token weight. So this person is still contributing in other ways. There's an element of dependency. So you've accustomed your spouse to that role and the fact that they're not earning in terms of money. Exactly. But their contribution is significant because they're looking after the house, which gives you the ability to go out there and earn an income. So you have to maintain them, don't you? You have to maintain exactly. them. Exactly. And the law views a homemaker's role and a person that's working's equal. role as almost equal. They're equal. And I think a lot of people still think that they're not. Exactly. I've been the breadwinner. Yep. He or she gets nothing. You know what they say, John? You've heard the saying that every successful person has always been the spouse that's contributed significantly. Always. Always. It's always been a way where, always. you know, for every successful man there's always been a, a woman in the background that's kept them, you know... Totally. Get the family together, basically. Exactly. But these days, I mean, that's a bit sexist. It doesn't matter who it is staying home because, no. quite frankly, with all this COVID business going on... Well, everyone's staying home. <laughs> <laughs> just as much the males as the that's females, right. correct? Exactly. Yeah. And I think it was with mm. coronavirus, there was such a shift, obviously, in the way, you know, children was getting dealt with. Like, you know, we got introduced to all these mm. new lists to expedite matters, you know, even to deal with property, to get a quick turnaround on property. So and, and just so on that issue there, John and Olivia, um, the family law courts are so hamstrung with cases. Oh, yes. Ideally, and plus because of the legal fees involved, you would want to try and reach some sort of amicable settlement out of court. Totally. Because totally. the expenses are so bloody high, aren't they? Totally. The courts are very big on alternative dispute resolution where it's mediation, conciliation, private mediations outside of court. It's a really big thing because you could be waiting one to two years for a trial date. Yes. There is ample time to be able to sit with all the parties and say, hey, what do you want? And Let's get something done. Get rid of all the emotion. There's so right. much bloody emotion and involved. That's why, exactly. And that's why you need lawyers involved. Yes. Tony. And this business, oh, I want the extra one, two, three or four percent. By the time you work out legal fees, if it ends up in a courtroom, oh, yes. you're going to be so far behind the eight ball. It's And plus the amount of time you have to wait. The legal fees are horrendous, Tony. They are. And we, all, we advise all our clients if we can come up with a negotiated settlement. That's reasonable. That's, that's reasonable for everyone. You're going to save yourself a lot of money in the long run. Yes. And once you settle, you draw a, a binding financial agreement, don't you? Yeah, so you've got actually two options. You can go binding financial agreement. Now, it depends obviously on the relationship, if it's a marriage or a de facto, depending on which provision yes. you come under. Or you can apply to the family court for a consent order. Okay. Yes. What's the most preferable way of doing it, uh, Olivia? Seeing a very big common trend with the binding financial okay. agreements. It's a big thing these days. So it's. And just quickly, they can be overturned if someone's misled the other party in terms Always. of assets, can't they, John? Totally. And just on the issue of binding financial agreements, there's what they used to know as the old prenuptial agreement. That's mm. another episode, Olivia. So another yeah. episode. Yeah. So we'll but go into all the But we do advise that newlywed couples or couples that are going to be married should get a prenup, shouldn't they, Tony? If nothing else, the good thing about the old so-called prenup or now uh, referred to as binding a financial mm. agreement, at least it identifies the assets. Exactly. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. Look, we've come to the end of the episode. Oh, Olivia, just before we go, can you let the viewers know they've got an inquiry they can ring? On one... 800-369-888. Or go to the website. Or go to our website. Our social media platforms as well. So yes. if you're actively yes. checking those, 
Gone inquiry. Viewers, we are expert in family law litigation and disputes. We're here to help, especially when financial disputes arise. Uh, Tony, myself and uh, Olivia, we're expert in, in these type of delicate negotiations. Tony. They are. They're very delicate. And you've got to have some compassion and sympathy. Exactly. And, That's right. And understanding. On that note, Olivia, thanks for coming on board for the first time. Thank you for having me. John, thanks, always a pleasure. Thanks, Olivia. Thank viewers, you, viewers. Thanks for watching and listening. Go to our social media platforms. Stay tuned for our future episodes. And please always remember to stay safe, especially in these very trying times.